the way I perceive guides is we have these entities, these these spiritual loving beings that are directly in connection to us. And their job is to literally help guide us back to the presence of love. Gabrielle Bernstein, a role model for spiritual seekers. Welcome back to Dear Gabby, my friends. Welcome back. Today, I have a topic that I know is probably one of the most popular topics on my podcast, on the YouTube channel, on my Instagram, my social media. If it's a subject line, an email, it's the thing that everyone opens, is the topic of spirit guides. How do we connect to our spirit guides? What are spirit guides? So this topic is something I've had a lot of mediums on my show talking about before. And today I'm going to talk about it from my perspective. It's an important topic for me because having a spiritual guidance system and a sense of knowing that there is a force of energy and love and presence of guides around me has given me a totally different perspective on my life. A example today, just today, I was uh, at my son's school and I was having a really important conversation with somebody about safety measures in the school. And I almost felt like this energy pushing me down, like not moving my legs. And I was standing at the at the coffee cart at the school where everybody, all the parents gather and they have coffee. And I felt like I was being held in place. And it's not like I couldn't physically move, but I did feel as though a presence of guidance was coming through saying, don't move. And I surrendered to that. And I stayed in that physical place for a little bit longer, even though I had a lot of things I had to get to at my desk. I listened to that physical guidance and that inner guidance. And I stayed there a little bit longer and a little bit longer, just chatting away. And in a conversation that I was having standing there, I started to talk about some really important measures that we thought would need to be put in place in the school. And I started to rally with the people that were talking with me and created sort of this like this like mom and dad, you know, collective of how, okay, we're going to make this happen and sent an email to the head of the school. And she was really receptive. And it was one of those moments where I was being guided by a spiritual presence beyond my physical sight to really stay in place, stand in place, see what else is being revealed in this moment, stick around, show up, take this guidance, don't push past it, and then see what comes of that. And these kinds of encounters with a spiritual presence beyond my physical sight have been in my reality for my entire life, truly, and very present for me. In my book, Spirit Junkie, I tell the story of how when I first got sober, I became really connected to the work of Marianne Williamson and her interpretation of the metaphysical text, A Course in Miracles. And finally, I got the hit to go out to get a copy of the course for myself. And so I walked into the metaphysical bookstore, and the first thing I saw was A Course in Miracles was on sale. Okay, universe, thank you. And I walked over to the book, and I picked it up, and my hands got warm and tingly. And then I felt this presence behind the book almost guiding me to the register, like dragging me to the register. And I was like, I think I need to buy this. And I put my my credit card in and I took the book and I walked outside and I opened the book and it said, this is a course in miracles. This is a required course. And I just remember just taking that in and just looking at this busy New York City street and thinking, oh my God, I was fully guided to this book. And I know this is meant to be. And indeed I was because that book became the core through line of many of the books I've written and a lot of my own spiritual faith. And so these moments where we get these intuitive hits to make a connection, to do something different, to walk into a bookstore, to stay a little longer in the room, to engage a little bit more with somebody, those moments of guidance are from coming from a presence of spiritual connection. They're a spiritual guide, a presence of, of love within us and around us. And the way I perceive guides is we have these entities, these, these spiritual loving beings that are directly in connection to us. And their job is to literally help guide us back to the presence of love and help guide us in our life to learn valuable lessons, to move through those experiences with grace, to support us in moments of chaos and moments of, of, of fear in moments of terror. They're always with us. And we have the opportunity to deepen our connection to our guides by communicating with them directly. Now, some guides also can be deceased loved ones. And I love, love, love this experience I had with my grandmother. 
My grandmother, Fritzy, was a very, very close family member to me. She was, she really had a, meant a lot to me. And we had a very close connection. We would get together and like, you know, wear little nightgowns and have these beautiful moments of connection when I'd visit her in Florida. And she was, she was really important to me. And towards the end of her life in her mid eighties, she had a fall and she broke her arm and her shoulder and was, as you can imagine, really uh, physically compromised as a result of it. And the first few weeks into this, my mother and I were really concerned about whether she should have this surgery or she should just live on pain meds forever. And we were really bummed out about the two options because neither option was very good. And in that time frame, we were just really in a lot of chaos and struggle. And I just remember it being really tough. And and I, at, this, at the same time, had a uh, workshop that I was leading at the spiritual center in Massachusetts. And so I remember preparing myself. I called my mom. I said, mom, you know, take care of Grammy. I'm going to go on my workshop and get things going. And that day that I was heading up to the workshop, some of my team members were at my house and I just asked them to just, just give me a few seconds. We had packed up the car. We were ready to go. But I said, guys, you know what? For some reason, I feel like I need to meditate right now. And so I stepped into my bedroom and I sat down on this beautiful plush sofa that I had. And I started to just go deep into my meditation. And it was a depth that I hadn't felt in a while. It's a depth that wasn't common in my meditation to just sink right into. And my hands started lifting up towards the sky. And I started feeling as though I was sending someone off. It was like sending an energy off upward. And it was like a beautiful moment of feeling like I was facilitating something for someone. It was really profound. And so I, I had this beautiful experience in this meditation and I felt very complete towards the end. And I relaxed my body and I came out of the meditation. And I started to gather my bags to get in the car. The phone rang before I got in the car and I picked up the phone and it was my mom. And my mom said to me, Grammy just left her body. And my immediate response was, I know, I helped her. And it was such a beautiful moment of acknowledging how that connection with a human can be carried on even in the afterlife. I then went on to go lead this workshop for the week. And I said to my grandmother, I said, Grammy, let me know that you're okay. Let me know that you are feeling safe and that you are wherever you need to be. And I said, I'm going to go lead this workshop. Just give me some signs that you're all right. Throughout the week, I was very ha head down leading the workshop. My, my grandmother's presence was with me throughout the week, but I hadn't really gotten my sign yet. The final day of the workshop, I got in my car and I headed home. And on my way home, I stopped at my friend Zoe's house. And I was with my girlfriend, Jenny and Zoe. And Zoe looked at me and she kept saying, Gabby, I want you to pull a card from this new tarot deck that I got. Like, I need you to pull this card. I need you to pull this card. And I was like, Zoe, why do I need to pull it? I'm so busy. And I was calling my husband and asking him what he wanted for dinner and what I should pick up at the grocery store. And finally, Jenny looks and she says, I'll pick a card for Gabby. She picks a card and her face goes white. She looks at me and she says, wow, this is definitely for you. And she turns the card around and she faces it towards me. And the card is an image of an elderly woman crossing over a bridge. And the caption under the image says, grandmother ensures safe crossing. You really can't make this up, people. <laughs> so this was my grandmother's way of saying, I am now in spirit. I am here. I'm safe. I've crossed over and I'm with you. And that relationship with my grandmother continues to grow and expand. And I know that she was with me. I felt her presence all around me when I was birthing my son. I feel her presence around me when I'm going through difficult times. I know that she's with me when I wear a certain jewelry. And these entities, these guides, these spiritual presence in our life, the spiritual presence in our life can be a just can be a deceased loved one. Often that's what we can connect to most easily because we can recognize it but it also can be just an energy of love that's there to support us. And so I wanted to share these different examples of what it's like to connect to guides because it's first important to understand what does it feel like when you're in that union, when you're in that connection. And then I wanna talk a little bit about how do we invoke that connection in and how do we respect that relationship? So we know we're in the presence of a spiritual guide if we have a strong intuition, or we have a physical sensation, like sometimes it can feel like someone's tickling my head, or sometimes I can feel my hands go numb, or literally being pushed in a different direction, like when I was in the in that bookstore. 
uh, or in the case of my grandmother, getting a sign, pulling a card that's a message from her, or seeing a sign that I've asked for. And that's a sign that that guide is indeed with you. You can hear a guide like an audible sound, literally audibly, you can hear a voice. Or you could hear it from the perspective of an inner sensation or an inner directive. So let's say similar to how you would hear an author while you're reading a book. It's like you can hear their voice while you're reading. That's kind of how I would liken the experience of listening to that guidance from the perspective of getting that inner direction. You can also get the presence of guidance through other people. So guides work through people. So sometimes you might be in those situations where you have like 15 different people saying, you should read this book, check out this book, read this book, read this book. And then like a week later, the book falls off the shelf. And so those moments of synchronicity, those are guides working through people to open the door. Their guides are also going to literally knock books off the shelf. Sometimes your guides will wake you up in the middle of the night and be like, go journal or, you know, step away and read this passage. When I was writing my first book, Add More Ink to Your Life, I remember being woken up in the middle of the night and being guided to walk over to my bookshelf. I picked a book up off the shelf that I hadn't read. It was just randomly there. I don't even know where I got it from. And it was this book called Living in the Light by Shakti Gawain. And I read it that night. I didn't go to sleep. And I remember when I was reading that book, I realized, oh my God, this is the exact book I needed to read to understand how to create the structure for my first book, which was Add More Ink to Your Life to really find a different outline for a book that really resonated with me so that I could have that direction for my own. So guides are always with us, giving us what we need to fulfill our highest function and our highest purpose. And we may have the opportunity to just have that presence be really available to us, but most people walk around with a big disconnect. They don't, first of all, know that there is a presence of guides around them. And that can be just, it's the first block in itself because you think it's just your will or the highway, nobody else is around. So when we have those moments of really just opening our heart, even watching this video is opening the door for you to have a connection to your guide because you're interested. Hmm, that sounds cool. I'd like to know more. That's a door that you are opening to a relationship to a guide beyond your physical sight. And so how do we make that connection? We make that connection first, I think, through a prayer or an intention. So an intention is watching this video. That is sending out a message to the universe, to your guides. I'm interested. I'd like to know more. A prayer could be really affirming with the words, thank you. Already affirming that the guidance is already with you and already available to you. Thank you, guidance of the highest truth and compassion for coming through me now. Thank you for revealing to me what is of the highest good. That prayer in itself can open radical doors. And often I'll lean on that prayer. I may not get a physical sensation or an audible voice or a sensation inside right away, but I may hours later get the exact message I needed to hear. So when you say that prayer, you're opening the door for the guidance to be revealed to you. And prayer is a temporary suspension of disbelief and a momentary opportunity to crack open to the perception of spiritual sight through seeing through the lens of spirit. And that spiritual sight offers us the opportunity to grow and expand the relationship with our guides. Now, how do we maintain and nurture and support that relationship? Well, I think writing with our guides is a very powerful tool. So sitting down and maybe grounding yourself in meditation. I have a lot of free meditations that you can use. If you go to deargabby.com forward slash free meditations, you can practice my free guided meditations and then following that meditation. And then my suggestion is that after that meditation, you sit down with your journal and at the top of the page, you write, thank you guides for writing through me now. Then just let your pen flow. Let it out. Let whatever you need to release be revealed onto the page. Don't judge it. Don't edit it. Just let it out. In time, you might notice that you're words change, the energy behind the writing changes. You might notice that you're getting directive. Sometimes when I'm writing with my guides, I'll start hearing things like, dear daughter of the light, or I'll hear, uh, darling one, we want to tell you this. And it's a lot of we, we, we. It's as if there's a collective energy supporting me. And so if you start to write more often and more often and more often, you'll start to get clear direction. And if you're somebody who is very physically oriented, Maybe you go do a big yoga class or go for a run and following that physical practice, you actually sit in meditation 
and welcome your guides into that space. Because sometimes when we clear the energy, the guidance can come through faster. And this guidance is available to us all the time, anywhere, anytime. All we really have to do is ask for it. And when we start to ask for that spiritual guidance in different ways, whether we're asking for a sign, just saying, I need a, a butterfly to show me that you're here, or I need an answer on this question. Thank you for revealing to me the answer to this question. Show me a rainbow if I'm on the right track. And asking the guides to show us signs that they're there, that their presence is there, that we are on the right track is another profound way to really connect to that guidance system that's available to us. If you like this video and you wanna get more Gabby, check out the next one right over here.